He who plants a tree plants a hope. Plant trees save earth. Welcome to Anita's Biology. In this video, we will be seeing male reproductive part in the flowering plants. First, let us see what is sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction involves two important process. One is the production of male and female gametes called as gametogenesis and another is the fusion of male and female gametes called as fertilization. So, sexual reproduction involves two important process. One is the gametogenesis and another is the fertilization. So, what is gametogenesis? It is the production of male and female gametes and fertilization is the fusion of male and female gametes. So, if the gametes are produced by the same individual, then we call it as the bisexual and if the gametes are produced by the different individual, then we call it as the unisexual. And male and female reproductive organs produced from the same individual, we call it as monoecious plants. And male and female reproductive organs that is formed on different individuals, then we call it as the dioecious plants. So, all these four terms are very important. That is bisexual, unisexual, monoecious and dioecious. So, what is bisexual? That is gametes present in the same individual. Unisexual, gametes produced in the different individual. Monoecious, male and female reproductive organs produced in the same individual. And dioecious, male and female reproductive organs produced in the different individual. Considering all this, what is the major difference between the asexual reproduction and the sexual reproduction? Asexual reproduction is always uniparental. Sexual reproduction is always biparental. And in asexual reproduction, it occurs by zoospores, conidia, budding, fragmentation and many so. In sexual reproduction, it occurs by the fusion of haploid gametes. And in asexual reproduction, the offsprings or the individuals are genetically identical among themselves and to the parent. Here in sexual reproduction, the offsprings of the individuals differ among themselves and from the parents. Asexual reproduction is a faster process and sexual reproduction is a very slow process. So, these are the major difference between asexual reproduction and the sexual reproduction. Next is sexual reproduction in lower plants like algae and bryophytes. So, here it produced by the production of gametes which may be motile or non-motile depending upon the species. There are three types of gametic fusion. One is the isogamy, next is the anisogamy and the third is the oogamy. So, isogamy, anisogamy and oogamy. So, in algae and lower plants, there will be external fertilization and in higher plants, it is internal fertilization. So, sexual reproduction in algae will always be external and in higher plants, it will, it will be always internal. Next, we will see about the flower. So, what is the importance of flower? Children, what do you think? What are the important concepts behind the flower? So, let us see. So, the flowers are the multidimensional perspectives from immemorial. And also, it is an inspirational tool for the poets. So, many poets have written uh, many poems uh, using the flowers. That is, they describe the flowers. Then, uh, then for the decorative material for all the celebrations and in Tamil literature, the five lands are denoted by the different flowers and also in some countries, the flags are embedded with flowers. The next is for the preparation of perfumes uh, which we use in our day to day life and morphologists mainly explain a flower as a highly condensed shoot which is meant for the reproduction. So, these are the important points regarding the flowers. So, the flower possesses four worlds and they are calyx, corolla, andresium and gynesium in which calyx and corolla are the non-essential organs and andresium and gynesium are the essential organs because andresium and gynesium are involved in the reproduction. So, this is the structure of a flower that is an endless of a flower. You can see different parts like pedicel. The stalk of the flower is called as pedicel. Then you can see the sepals which will be mostly green in color. Then you can see the petals that is otherwise called as corolla which will be colored and you can see the 
andresium and gynesium that is uh, andresium will be the if andresium will be represented as the stamens and gynesium as the ovary style and stigma so in this calyx and corolla are the non essential organs andresium and gynesium are the essential organs of a flower because andresium and gynesium involves in the reproduction so the process of changes involved in sexual reproduction of higher plants includes three important stages so what are they they are pre fertilization the next is the fertilization and the third one is the post fertilization changes so the three stages are pre fertilization fertilization and post fertilization changes pre fertilization structures and events are very important and what happens here is the hormonal and structural changes in the plant lead to the differentiation and development of the floral primordium so initially there will be differentiation of the flower that is floral primordium so you can see the male reproductive part and the female reproductive part so in which the male reproductive part is represented by the andresium and the female reproductive part is represented by the gynesium so children in this video we will be seeing about the male reproductive part and its development that is andresium and how the andresium is formed and what how the microspores are formed and the formation of the pollen grains also so the male reproductive part male reproductive part is the andresium which is made up of stamens and each stamen possesses an anther and a filament and even the anther bears pollen grains which represents the male gametophyte so this is the anther and the stalk is called as the filament so this anther bears pollen grains which represents represents the male gametophyte next we should know about the development of anther so it is very interesting to know about the development of anther so a very young anther develops as a homogeneous mass of cells surrounded by an epidermis so during this development what happens the anther assumes a four lobed structure and in each lobe a row or a few rows of hypodermal cells become enlarged with conspicuous nuclei so this functions as the archesporium so this archesporial cells divide by periclinal divisions to form primary parietal cells towards the epidermis and primary sporogenous cells towards the inner side of the anther and later on what happens this primary parietal cells undergo a series of periclinal and anticlinal divisions and form 2 to 5 layers of anther walls composed of endothelium middle layers and tapetum from periphery to center so this is the anther anther primordium and you can see the differentiation of the archesporial cells you can see the differentiation of the archesporial cells next you can see the parietal cell and the sporogenous cell formation next is the wall layers are formed and here you can see the sporogenous st stage where there is a clear differentiation of epidermis then you can see middle layer tapetum and in the center you can see the sporogenous cell next you can see the pollen tetrad stage so you can see four lobes very clearly and um, in that each lobe you can see the epidermis followed by endothelium you can see middle layer tapetum and also pollen tetrad next is micropore stage that is the microspore is actually the uh, actually it is uh, formed from the evolved from the pollen next you can see the pollen grain stage where these microspores separate and forms the pollen grains so this is the development of an anther next we should know about the microsporogenesis so what is the important concept behind microsporogenesis is the diploid microspore mother cell undergoes meiosis to form haploid microspores so here you have to keep this in mind children because we know that the in sexual reproduction haploid gametes are formed so that is the that is called as the gametogenesis so here the diploid microspore mother cells undergoes meiosis and forms haploid microspores 
So what are all the stages in the microsporogenesis? So first the primary sporogenous cells undergoes mitotic division and forms the sporogenous tissue or the mass together and this is the last generation of the sporogenous tissue. Uh, it functions microspore mother cells and each microspore mother cell will undergo meiotic division and form four haploid microspores that is called as the tetrad micro, microspore tetrad. So this you can see in the pollen tetrad stage. So this microspore will be haploid in number. So this microspores soon separate apart from each other and now we call this as the pollen grains. There is an important concept that is uh, you have to know that uh, in some plants all the microspores in the microsporangium remain held together and that condition we call it as the pollinium. The best example for pollinium is the calotropis. So here what happens? You can see the picture of calotropis and here you can see how the pollinium is kept intact. Uh, it is held together uh, or attached to a clamp or a clip like sticky structure that is called as the corpusculum or the disc and you can see filamentous or thread like structure, thread like part arising from each pollinium that is called as the retinaculum. So this corpusculum and retinaculum are very important considering calotropis and this type of uh, pollen formation we call it as the pollinium and you have to note down that the shape of the uh, pollinium will look like an inverted letter Y that is that is called as the translator. Next we will be seeing about the mature anther TS. So the transfer section of the mature anther uh, reveals the presence of anther cavity surrounded by an anther wall and it is bilobe and each lobe having two theca that we call it as the dithecus condition and uh, the typical anther is tetrasporangiate. Tetrasporangiate means four lobes are present. So uh, this uh, TS of mature anther has got three important regions to be explained. One is the anther wall, then another is the anther cavity and third is the connective. So in this anther wall you can see epidermis, endothesium, middle layer and tapetum. So these are the four important layers in the anther wall. Apart from that you, have, you should know about the anther cavity and the connective. So we shall see about the tapetum again because it is again divided into two types. They are the uh, secretory tapetum and the invasive tapetum. So first we will see about the anther wall. So this anther wall consists of important layers like epidermis, endothesium, middle layer and tapetum. So what does this epidermis consist of? This epidermis is a single layer and it is protective in function and this cells undergo repeated anticlinal division. So you can see how the divisions are taking place in the picture that is uh, which helps to increase in the length. So anticlinal divisions take place and the cells uh, rapidly en enlarges. Next is the endothesium. So coming to the endothesium, it is generally a single layer of radially elongated cells found below the epidermis and the inner tangential wall develops band of alpha cellulose. Sometimes it may be lignified also and the cells are hygroscopic. So in the anthers of aquatic plants that is saprophyte, cleistrogamous flowers and extreme parasites, endothelial differentiation is absent. So this cells along the junction of two sporangia of an anther lobe lack these thickenings and this region is called as the stomium. So you can see the stomium in that picture which helps in the dehiscence of the anther and endothesium is the radially elongated cells. Next is the middle layer. So this middle layer it is comprised of two to three layers of cells and um, uh, that is to the endothesium constitute middle layer and they are generally ephemeral and they disintegrate or get crushed during maturity. So only during the initial level you can see that. Next is the tapetum. So this tapetum is the innermost layer of the anther wall and attains its maturity development at the tetrad stage of microsporogenesis. So it is derived partly from the peripheral wall layer and partly from the connective tissue of the anther lining the anther locule. Thus the tapetum is dual in origin since two region or, or organizations can be seen. 
thus the tapetum is dual in origin and it nourishes the developing sporogenous tissue and also the microspore mother cells and the microspores. The cells of the tapetum may remain uninucleate or may contain more than one nucleus or the nucleus may become polyploid. So it also contributes to the wall materials, sporolinin, pollen kit, tryphin and number of proteins that control incompatibility. Tapetum also controls the fertility or sterility of the microspores or the pollen grains. So there are two types of uh, tapetum based on its behavior. First one is the secretory tapetum and the next is the invasive tapetum. This secretory tapetum is otherwise called as the parietal, glandular or cellular. So this tapetum remains in the original position and cellular integrity and nourishes the developing microspores. So the invasive tapetum here what happens is the cell will lose their inter inner tangential and radial walls and the protoplast of all the tapetal cell coalesces to form a periplasmodium. So here there, there won't be any differentiation. That, that is why it is called as the periplasmodial. Next is functions of the tapetum. So the first major function is it supplies nutrition to the developing microspores. It contributes sporopollinin through pubish bodies thus plays an important role in the pollen wall formation and also the pollen kit material is contributed by the tapetal cells and is later transferred to the pollen surface. And another uh, function is uh, the exine pro protein re is responsible for rejection reaction of the stigma that are present in the cavities of the exine. So these proteins are derived from the tapetal cells. So these are the major functions of the tapetum. Next is the anther cavity. The anther cavity is filled with microspores in younger stages or with pollen grains at the maturity. So the meiotic division of the microspore mother cells give rise to microspores which are haploid in nature. Next is the connective. So it is the column of sterile tissue surrounded by the anther lobe and it possesses vascular tissue and it also contributes to the inner tapetum. Microspores and pollen grains. So the microspores are the immediate product of meiosis of the microspore mother cells whereas the pollen grain is derived from the microspores. And the microspores have protoplasts surrounded by a wall which is yet to be fully developed. So this microspores that is the pollen protoplast has dense cytoplasm with a centrally located nucleus. So when these thin areas are small and it is round it is called as germ pores or when it is elongated it, it is called as the furrows. And it is mainly related to the germination of the pollen grains. Coming to the pollen wall, it is made up of two layers that is intine and exine. So what is intine? The intine is the inner layer and it is very thin, uniform and is made up of pectin, hemicellulose, cellulose and callose together with proteins. And what is exine? Exine is the outer layer and it is thick made up of cellulose, sporopollenin and pollen kit. So exine is not uniform and is thin at certain areas. The shape of the pollen grain varies from species to species and it may be globose, ellipsoid, fusiform, lobed, angular or even crescent shaped. So from the picture you can see different shapes of the pollen grains and the size of the pollen also varies from 10 micrometers in myosotis to 200 micrometers in the members of the family Cucurbitaceae and Nyctaginaceae. So the pollen kit uh, is contributed by the tapetum and colored yellow or orange and is chiefly made up of carotenoids or flavonoids. So it is an oily layer forming a thick viscous coating over pollen surface. So what is the function? It attracts the insects and protects damage from UV radiation. Next we, have, we should know about the development of male gametophyte. So the microspore is the first cell of the male gametophyte and it is haploid. You have to keep this in mind. The microspore is the first cell of the male gametophyte and it is haploid. And what happens during the development? It takes place while they are still in microsporangium itself. So the nucleus of the microspore divides to form a vegetative and the generative nucleus. So you can see the vegetative cell and the generative cell in the picture D. 
so a wall is laid around the generative nucleus resulting in the formation of two unequal cells so later on what happens this generative uh, cell near the generative cell a wall will be formed and what happens it becomes two cell structure which is of unequal size one will be larger irregular nucleus bearing with uh, uh, abundant food reserve called as vegetative cell and a smaller generative cell so at this two cell stage what happens the pollens are liberated from the anther so it is liberated and in some plants the generative cell again undergoes a division to form two male gametes so in these plants so this two male gametes are represented in uh, the picture g you can see in picture g two male gametes so in the in some plants what happens the pollen is liberated at three cell stage that is with two male gametes and also one tube nucleus so in 60 percentage of angiosperms pollen is liberated in two cell stage that is vegetative cell and generative cell stage further the growth of the male gametophyte occurs only if the pollen reaches the right stigma so at the correct time what what should happen the pollen should go and reach the stigma only then there will be uh, fertilization taking place the pollen on reaching the stigma absorb moisture and swells then later on the intent grows as a pollen tube through the germ pore so this you have to keep in mind the intent grows as pollen tube through the germ pore so in case the pollen is liberated at two cell stage the generative cell will divide in the pollen into two male cells so if it is two cell stage what happens after producing the uh, pollen tube later on it will divide that is the generative nucleus will divide and form male gametes two male gametes this may happen after reaching the stigma or in the pollen tube before reaching the embryo sac so so this is this is the uh, development of the male gametophyte in this video we have seen about the male reproductive part development of anther microsporogenesis stages in the development of microsporogenesis ts of mature anther microspores and pollen grains and at last development of male gametophyte i hope you understood the video now we'll move on to the question session question number one fusion of male and female gametes is called as dash Question number two, name the types of gametic fusion. Question number three, dash is the main reproductive part of the flower. Question number four, diploid microspore mother cell undergoes meiosis to form dash. And the last question is, the outer layer of pollen wall is called dash. Children, I hope you have written the answers. Shall we check? The answers are fertilization, isogamy, anisogamy and oogamy. Third one is andrisium. Fourth is microspores. And fifth one is exine. I hope you got it. And congratulations to those who have got it. If you have done any mistake, please see the video again and write the answers. All the best children. Hope you understood the video. And if you have any doubts, feel free to put it in the comment box. If this video is useful to you, make it useful to your friends also. Thank you for watching. Hit a like, share, comment and subscribe Anita's Biology. Thank you.